Hi, this is uh, Professor Chuck Wood coming at you from Duquesne University. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about corporate governance and some questions you might run into in interviews when you're dealing with corporate governance positions that you might be applying for. Okay, the first is, why do we need corporate governance? Um, and this question might come up when uh, they're trying to get it to, to understand where you're coming from with corporate governance. Um, we don't need corporate governance because somebody's making us do it. We need corporate governance because people have their own self-interests ahead of a lot of times other stakeholders. Um, and so this includes their own self-interest in terms of not following guidelines or ignoring guidelines. So, so it's too expensive to uh, comply, we'll just not do it. And, I know it might not work, but we're going to do it anyway our way because it's cheaper. The moment you say, no, you have to comply, then then uh, um, the uh, organizations are governed to, to in, in fact, have a certain level of uh, uh, trustworthiness in their actions. Now, governance also is not only at the whole enterprise or corporate level, but also from the departments from within the corporation. So managers also have their own agency issues where they want to put their own time, their own resources ahead of the company at times, and so the company will also uh, uh, ensure with its own governance that the managers do not do so. Um, and, okay, so that's that's why we need it. Now, uh, what are some uh, government and private organizations that govern corporations? Okay, uh, I'm going to mention three. There are several, depending on what data you're dealing with. Uh, sometimes if you're dealing with dealing with a uh, children's data. They have FERPA and SIPA that uh, guidelines that force you to behave a certain way. But uh, um, and and uh, uh, um, government organizations have certain uh, regulations as well. But I'm going to uh, stick with mainly three. One is Sarbanes-Oxley, of course, is the, the big bully in the room, if you will. Uh, at in the uh, um, after the Enron scandal in the uh, 2000s, in the early 2000s, uh, the the senators got together uh, and came up with a set of rules that force corporations to go through an auditing process and also force the CEO, the, the officers of the company, to agree that this process is valid, or they can even serve jail time if it's not. So they took away the excuse that I didn't know we were stealing from everyone, and they, they uh, put it in the, if you sign this, you were saying you checked and you are not misrepresenting yourself. You are not uh, uh, misrepresenting your, your investors. It's mainly for investors though. So it's publicly traded. If you're private, it doesn't affect you. What probably does affect you is the payment card industry, PC, that's Visa, American Express, MasterCard, uh, and Discover, and, and other payment cards. Uh, payment card industry uh, DSS standards are um, um, Data security standards, the DSS. Uh, so the PCI DSS uh, defines what you need to do to take Visa. If you do not comply, your rate is, I think, close to triple what it, you normally would pay. So it, almost everyone who takes Visa feels a need to comply with the payment card industry's uh, 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 recommendations, I should say, or regulations. Uh, if you do not, you, they take away your ability to accept MasterCard and Visa. This is not a government organization. These are Visa and MasterCard themselves and American Express saying, if you have to comply with our standards, we're not going to let you take our, pre our credit card, and if, and if you do, we're going to make you pay a lot more to use it. Um, so companies, uh, uh, there's no need for any government oversight because the payment card industry itself will literally crush a company if they don't do what they say. And the fines are ex extremely high. So if you do not comply or if you fake compliance or fraudulently comply, um, it, the uh, record has been shown that it is simply not worth it. Finally, HIPAA, the Health Information uh, Privacy, uh, that's what the HIP and HIPAA stands for. If you have health information about people, you have to follow a set of guidelines on how to secure it. Um, the health information, if it leaks out, can cost you literally millions of dollars, and it has cost organizations that. So 
Uh, HIPAA is another organization that if, if you have that type of information, you need to be a little careful on how you handle that type of information, and you need to be aware of what's happening. I'd say that the uh, uh, main rule is with these organizations, work with them, comply in good faith. If they get the feeling that you're jerking them around, you'll start getting fined. You'll start getting uh, um, abused by the organizations. So don't do that. Comply in good faith. If they have a rule to comply with, it's best that you do rather than uh, not comply and see what happens. Okay, and then um, finally, who's in charge of choosing, who's in charge of complying of, with governance, who's in charge of choosing the governance, who's in charge of complying with the governance, and who's in charge of making sure you, you did comply with the governance. Okay, upper management is ultimately in charge of choosing which governance they uh, wish to follow. So the payment card industry governance uh, goes through upper management. If upper management wants to take credit cards, they have to comply, and they know they do. Um, but the uh, uh, who's in charge of, of complying, this is everyone in the organization. So it requires an enterprise-wide training, an enterprise-wide implementation. If you go in and you say, uh, only this group needs to comply, or this group's complying, the rest of these, don't need, these people don't need to worry about it, you will end up not complying. And what will happen then is you'll get fined, you might get, uh, uh, if it's a corporate governance, you might get fired if you're a manager. So it's very risky not to comply. And then finally, who's in, who's, uh, in charge? If I tell you that you have to have adequate controls on your accounting methods, it's enterprise-wide. So if you don't comply, uh, with with uh, with uh, something, you will you will be fine. The auditors are the ones that ensure that to make sure that you comply. So the auditors are the ones that come in and say, um, you know, check the controls, make sure that you're following the rules. Uh, they're very important. Um, I, I have seen auditors uh, in certain organizations kind of get the oh yeah we need to bring an auditor in. It's time for six months get him in, get him out as fast as possible so he can get back with the real business. But the problem with that mentality is if people are not complying and you try to rush an auditor at their job, the non-compliance will continue. A lot of times companies can be have money stolen from them. A lot of times companies can be violating federal guidelines that have, will cost them millions of dollars. So you really want to give the auditors the time that they need. What are the components of internal controls? Okay. the uh, components are environmental controls, assessment of risk, control activities, information and communication and monitoring. So if you have uh, environmental control, this is some, something in your environment that tries to stop a certain behavior or detect a certain behavior. The assessment of risk is what's at risk if you don't control or if you violate the control. The control activities are how is the control implemented in your organization. And then information and communication is the idea that the auditor gets the information, communicates to the people that need to comply with control and communicates with top management. So that you need free flow of information. You know, everyone needs to know what we need to do and how we need to do it. And then finally, the monitoring is the auditors that go in and, and uh, have to uh, examine if you've controlled. Okay, and then finally, what are some limitations of internal controls? Uh, I would start off by saying this, that the limitations, uh, 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 the main limitation of the control is that if you think your data is secure because you follow some standard, like for instance the payment card industry standard, you are incorrect. You will get hacked. Uh, the controls are nearly there to give you a guideline for the minimal compliance, but you know, the, uh, you, you, know you need more controls than that, they're not sufficient. Okay, that being said, um, the problem with controls are this. Management can override the controls. So management needs to implement the controls on a system-wide policy basis. But if the people who make the policy decide the policy doesn't apply to them, it's a weakness. The second is uh, sometimes the controls can be circumvented by collusion. This is the idea that if I have a, a rule that every paycheck needs to be audited, and I talk to the auditor and we split the difference by adding a new paycheck, collusion can circumvent the controls. So that we put a control in place saying the auditor is going to check me, and then the auditor and I are in, 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 uh, in it together and, and uh, I'm secretly cut, splitting a paycheck that we got. Okay, 
the third is that uh, uh, good internal controls can break down due to bad judgment. This is the uh, idea that um, um, the controls that we put in place might not be too clear or might not uh, be clear enough to certain people. They could not implement them or impl implement them incorrectly and think they're implementing them. And so that's a breakdown too. And uh, finally, a uh, limitation is they can exceed the benefit that they give you. Uh, many people have this complaint with socks, although recent research shows that the companies that implemented socks ended up getting a boost in their stock price because of more transparency. But that being said, if someone requires you to do something, the cost of doing it might exceed the benefit that you get from it. And, and that's a limitation. Now, I got a lot of these from cram.com. So um, anyway, that's it for this round of interview questions. Thanks for uh, checking out my YouTube site. Check out my Amazon site for my books, the link's below. And also subscribe to this site because we come out with new interviews all the time. Uh, so anyway, thank you for your time, and, and uh, we'll catch you on the next round.